awesome would that be? Um, Kara, you have a question coming in to you? Yeah, there's a question here from Underdog in the chat room for you, Mark. Um, Underdog would like to know, how long do you think it will take for Ubuntu to go mainstream on the desktop? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't, I don't know, and I don't, you know, I don't see us as being in a major battle for for mainstreamness. What we're in is a battle to to produce something wonderful that's easy to use, that's powerful, and that, that does its own things. Um, in some parts of the world, we see Linux actually shipping on 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 a significant percentage of the computers that ship. Um, I think in China, it's something like thirty to forty percent. In India, it's wow. similar. Um, and what's really interesting to me is that. Um, increasingly, we see evidence that when those computers come back for repair, they still have Linux on them. And so a lot of people thought that that, that Linux was really just a kind of a, a fig leaf for pirated Windows. But to my mind, it's clear. If, if we can deliver the functionality that people want, the web, Facebook, basic yeah. office applications, and Category so on, five, and they'll really live with it. it. They'll, 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 they'll use it. And, uh, yeah. and uh, that's, that's, and that's the story. That's the great thing is that we're, we're stepping into this world where it's not just one operating system. And, and certainly Ubuntu has had a, a huge role in making desktop Linux uh, something that's viable for an end user. I mean, I could give this to, to grandma and she'd be able to use it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the things that you should be very, very proud of with Ubuntu uh, is the fact that it's so user friendly and, and easy for somebody to get to get familiar with uh, right out of the back. Well, I'll pass it on to the guys down the hall. They're, they're the ones who deserve the credit. Sure, yeah, do that. Uh, now, just uh, with you being uh, on site at the uh, Development Summit, is there something, you know, we all want to know what is coming for Jaunty. What can we look forward to in the next release of the Ubuntu desktop Linux operating system? So on, on the desktop, my, my sort of interest now is on making things sort of really strikingly uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how we can Elevate the desktop experience. You know, rather than playing catch up to the Mac and to Windows, let's let's really push things, push the the, the, the limits. We, right. we 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 can break the rules to a certain extent. So we'll be doing quite a bit of work around the the sort of desktop experience, notifications, how applications bring your bring your attention to something that's not essentially critical. We'll we'll be doing some work there and uh, and starting to invest quite a lot in, 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 in the, the, the launching and switching experience, how, how people find applications, how, yeah. they, how they run them. Um, in the free software world, you know, it's not necessary for us to be, uh, um, we can blur the line between the operating system and the, and the application and focus on what people want to get done. Mm -hmm. Because in the proprietary software world, you know, you have different companies selling products. Effectively, each piece of software is a separate product. Um, in the free software world, you know, we can we can we can integrate all of those things together and just help users focus on what they want to get done. You know, I want to I want to write a letter, or I want to I want to get onto Facebook, right. or I want to get onto get get onto Skype. And so we're trying to shift the emphasis to take advantage of uh, of that. And, and the first the first pieces of that will will show up in uh, in Jaunty Jackalope. So are we mainly talking about eye candy here, or are we actually talking about the interface itself and the way that the operating system functions? Well, the, the tricky thing, then the interesting thing is to try to pull together eye candy and productivity. You know, making right. something shiny doesn't 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 help nearly as much as making something feel, you know, a joy to use. Yeah. And so so that's that's the key. Yeah, we, we have a we have a whole bunch of new capabilities in the platform at the moment um, that are showing up as eye candy, you know, 3D right. effects, yeah. um, OpenGL. Uh, but the question is how we can harness those things to actually make people more productive, um, and that's yeah, yeah. that's the real challenge for Very us. Very cool. I know that the uh, you know the the Compass Fusion Cube has been a, a big productivity booster for me, uh, you know, and, <laughs> and not to mention it saved a lot of desk space because I was able to actually get rid of my second monitor because I've got four sides to my cube, right? So that really helps me out. So uh, any other questions? Isn't it there? interesting how oh. isn't it interesting how just giving a spatial awareness to those virtual desktops yeah. suddenly makes it a real thing? Very and, much so. Uh, beforehand, it sort of it sort of felt abstract and strange. And for those who think that the cube, for example, is just eye candy, it's it's really a productivity thing because I've got basically like as far as my mind can fathom it, I've got like four computer screens, mm. and I've got access to be able to flip them around and have different applications up on each screen. So, so I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with Jaunty as well. There's a question here in the chat room from Braun, and Braun would like to know your thoughts on the relationship with Debian. So Debian is our rock, effectively. Um, for those who those who are new to to Linux, there are multiple different distributions, and often um, distributions sort of build um, 
or off one another. So somebody will take an existing distribution and modify it and change it to enhance or, or focus attention on a specific area. And there's this amazing distribution called Debian. It's um, probably the, the broadest, biggest community um, in free software. Mm -hmm. um, and Ubuntu is very much based on, on Debian. So that makes it for a complex relationship because we, we do a tremendous amount of work. We've got very specific priorities. Um, we get a tremendous amount of attention, and a lot of the, the good stuff that flows into Ubuntu has actually come from Debian. So that does create some, something of a complex relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we work, we work hard on that relationship, and, and increasingly I'm seeing some signs from the Debian community that they're actually appreciative and insightful as to what we bring to, uh, to, to that relationship. So it's a very symbiotic relationship from my perspective. Oh, I, see. I wouldn't want to build Ubuntu any other way than kind of in partnership with Debian. And increasingly, I think there are Debian guys who, who are willing to stand up and say that, that Ubuntu's existence has been really good for Debian too. And so Ubuntu is giving back to the Debian community as well. Uh, we did a quick sort of troll through the uh, the Debian tracker, and there was something like 3,000 bugs that had been uh, conversations with Ubuntu, between Ubuntu and Debian developers wow. for, the, for the latest Debian release, and something like 500 of them had patches that had been uh, accepted and landed. So. It's a, it's a not insignificant contribution to Debian, and, That's and I think gradually people are becoming aware of that. That's good to hear. Are there any final questions in the chat room before we move on, or do you have any questions, Carrie, for Mark? Um, I think that was it for the chat room. Um, no, I think that pretty much answers all the questions oh. that I came to the interview with. Thank you so much, Mark. It was definitely informative, and I know all the viewers certainly appreciate um, your idea of philanthropy and and how you just want to help everyone out, it's um, really appreciated. Definitely. Well, if we can bring together amazing technology, amazing sort of social processes, and an interesting new business model, I think that's, uh, that's a win. So thank you very much, guys. It was Excellent. nice to meet you. Mark, thank you very much for being on Category 5 TV. Take care. Stay well.